Horticulture treatment took the form of visualizing, watching, visiting a hospital healing garden, and most importantly, actual growing. It was hoped that it would help people with mental or physical illnesses heal, reduce stress, improve well-being, and promote social involvement and re-employment. The horticultural therapy garden was detailed in terms of its outside design, garden equipment adaptations, cultivation methods, and plant material. Hello, this is Scope Care. And in this video, we'll discuss rehabilitation with healing gardens and how it promotes a positive attitude toward health and wellness. Please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button to get notified of every upload if you want to learn more. Gardening is often described as therapy by gardeners. And this evaluation may be more accurate than you believe. Gardening is wonderful for your physical health and generates nutritious homegrown foods, but it also has therapeutic advantages mental and emotional well-being, receive boosts along the garden route, from relaxation and stress reduction to formal therapist-directed programs, the origins of therapeutic gardening in the United States. Gardening has a long and illustrious history in the United States, and its therapeutic advantages are no exception. Dr. Benjamin Rush, a notable physician and signer of the Declaration of Independence, reported that garden settings and digging in gardens were important components in the healing of patients with mental illness in the late 1700s. As a result, therapeutic landscapes became popular, and gardening as a form of rehabilitation became popular as well. The first horticulture treatment curriculum in the United States was developed in 1972. As part of Kansas State University's mental health department some 200 years later, since then, therapeutic horticulture and healing gardens have sprung up in places as diverse as hospitals, schoolyards, and prison sites across the United States. These gardens, which are sensory-focused, plant-dominated, and brimming with aroma, color, and texture, can be used for passive enjoyment or active employment. Visitors benefit from reduced tension and worry, as well as enhanced hope and happiness. Garden settings have a curative quality to them. Interacting with nature, even if it's just looking at trees or visiting gardens, can have profound healing effects. Patients recovering from surgery who looked out their hospital windows at trees recovered more quickly than those who looked at walls. Not only did tree viewing patients have shorter hospital stays, but they also had fewer problems, used fewer painkillers, and received less negative chart comments from attending personnel. In one study, simply looking out the window at a garden from a balcony was proven to boost mood in both sad and non-depressed senior people. Visiting the garden and walking or sitting in it did even more. Participants reported feeling less depressed and having improved mood, sleep quality, and attention, as well as having more peace of mind and hopefulness. Time spent in a garden setting has been shown to lessen the usage of as-needed drugs and relieve symptoms of Alzheimer's disease and dementia, such as hostility and agitation. Effects of a therapeutic garden therapeutic garden is intended to have restorative effects on patients' mental well-being, as well as favorable health consequences. Both passive and active nature connections improve health and well-being with positive results such as stress reduction. Visitors can gain a variety of health benefits from engaging with nature, including relief from mental tiredness, reduced stress, and an overall boost in emotional well-being. The therapeutic garden at Thumb Bay Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation Hospital aims to provide patients with a happy recovery experience. The rehab garden will assist patients recuperating from stress and promote health by improving their balance, walking, and other life skills. The Healing Garden at the University of Miami Rehabilitation and Orthopedic Institute engages the entire person in physical ways, mobility, endurance, coordination of muscle tone and motor capabilities, in cognitive ways, memory, attention, concentration, task order, and identification by name and color, and in group social emotional activity. Depression is alleviated through social interaction, feeling of accomplishment, self-esteem, and motivation. Please give this video a thumbs up before we continue, and feel free to offer a suggestion for what we should cover next. How to turn your ordinary garden into a rehabilitation garden. Improve the look of your garden entrance. To make entering the sanctuary feel unique, use a naturally styled pathway, hedge, steps, or fence. Depending on the level of privacy needed, this border can be soft or rigid. 
make use of calming waters. To produce a calming feeling, a water feature does not need to be complicated. Even a simple rock bubbler makes pleasant sounds and has an attractive appearance. A pond or waterfall in a larger location brings nature's splendor right to your doorstep. Using color in a novel way. Will you spend time in your sanctuary early in the mornings or late at night? When natural light is scarce, use low wattage or LED lighting to bring out the best in plants and ornamental items. With strategically placed lights, you can create gorgeous shadows and attract attention to the delicate colors and textures of your flowers and plants. Make a place for people to rest. Choose an area or two that invites guests to relax and spend a long time, whether it's a single bench or a set of pleasant garden furniture. To make it easier to kick back and relax, consider adding an outdoor bookshelf or blanket box. Mother Nature Should Be Emulated For a sanctuary garden, there is no better design guidance than Mother Nature. Use a variety of natural elements, such as rocks and boulders, decorative grasses, wood, shrubs, and flowers in combination. Do you have a favorite hiking trail or vantage point? Take a few things home with you. To achieve the desired effect, combine trees and wildflowers, boulders and water, or rocks and ferns. Garden Art Enhance the natural beauty of your space with a piece of art that complements the mood you want to create. To retain the aesthetic of your home in the sanctuary, consider bright ceramic pots, a wind-powered sculpture, or a whimsical statue. Inviting lovely visitors. Attract birds and butterflies by providing habitat and characteristics. Using native plants pays off in this situation since they are adapted to thrive in the local environment and provide a safe haven for your neighborhood birds. Add a bird bath or a feeder to entice your favorite birds to come. The building blocks of a successful rehabilitation garden. According to Jack Carmen, president of design for generations and physical therapist Cheryl Landry, who is also the regional director of Select Medical Rehabilitation Services, one particular resident story exemplifies the power of placing seniors in more natural and familiar settings for their rehabilitation therapy. A therapist and a resident were wandering around in the rehabilitation garden in one of the communities where they were working, when the resident turned to his therapist and remarked, let's go back inside so I can complete my therapy and be done for the day. Unbeknownst to him, the garden environment with its many walking paths and benches for practice getting up and down provided all of the necessary pieces for him to complete his therapy time, and he didn't even realize it. Carmen and Landry provided a few design features that are necessary for a rehabilitation garden as a preview to their session. Make it normal. According to Carmen, the idea is to make someone feel like they're in their own neighborhood and to allow them to practice the skills they'll need to return home. Residents might practice opening a screen door while holding mail, closing a window while leaning over a shelf, or putting items on a low-hanging clothesline. Make it multifunctional. A rehabilitation garden isn't simply for physical treatment. Instead, these areas can be constructed and used for a range of purposes, such as occupational, speech, and horticulture treatment, as well as memory care. Everything is there for a reason, Carmen explains. Plants, for example, can be labeled so the residents can wander around the garden and find them. Collaboration is critical. Collaborating with the employees, owners, administrators, and therapists to understand the goals and then integrating design features that fit those needs is the first step in getting all the proper aspects in place. We want administrators and owners to be happy with what they have in their facilities, families to know their loved ones are getting specialized care, and therapists to know they can think outside the box and that they have the means to do so, Landry adds. Imperfections are also important. The real world isn't perfect and a rehab garden shouldn't be either, Landry explains. We don't want them to learn to walk on a lovely smooth surface. They must always be able to negotiate and comprehend safely. It can be beneficial to include a range of surfaces and realistic scenarios, such as slanting sidewalks or uneven turf. Location. These outdoor spaces should be adjacent or close to indoor therapy programs so that residents and therapists can easily reach them. But their usefulness doesn't end there. Many institutions, according to Carmen, use these gardens to hold events or social activities for their residents. They can also be a desirable feature for potential residents and families. Whether it's long-term care or rehab, Facility owners or administrators are aiming to recruit people to their facility for a variety of reasons, Landry explains. The rehabilitation garden is not only aesthetically pleasing, but it also serves a practical purpose. Healing and rehabilitation gardens are incredibly beneficial since they have been shown to alleviate stress and provide a feeling of well-being. 
This results in significant psychological, physiological, and behavioral benefits, such as decreased anxiety, melancholy, and other negative moods, lower blood pressure, and increased immunological function, and better adherence to treatment protocols. Gardening can also be a stress-relieving activity. It is beneficial to your mental health to move your body. Gardening in particular can help you manage stress and improve your mental health. A 2017 analysis of data found that gardeners had lower levels of stress, anxiety, and depression than non-gardeners. That concludes today's video. If you'd like to learn more, subscribe and switch on notifications to be notified of new videos. This is Scope Care, and we'll see you in our next video.